Today, I'm going to show you my simple, easy, five-step, six-item process I use to keep my leather dress shoes looking brand new every single day, all while saving exactly $957.78 a year by doing it myself. And with such specific detail that by the end of this video, you can too. This is neither the bare minimum you could do nor the absolute maximum, but it is what I personally do to fully restore and maintain my shoes when they start looking a little worse for wear. And stick around to the end where I will break down the exact math of how I save that much money and how you can calculate it for yourself. These are my stunning Balmoral Oxfords by Yearn Shoemaker. I love them to death, but they are in pretty rough condition. Guys, there is no point in having nice dress shoes if they are going to look like this. So let's see just how well we can fix them up. Leather is, much like the skin from which it is derived, porous. And before applying any creams or waxes to it, we want to clear it of any dust, dirt, and physical debris so that stuff doesn't get pressed into the leather along with our product. Grab any clean, soft cotton towel. We want this to be wet enough that it will grab dirt, but not too wet that water will soak deep into the leather. To achieve this, I like to run just the center of the cloth under a faucet. Then I wring out the towel, which distributes the water within it. This results in a perfect level of slight dampness that will not wet the leather anything beyond a thin evaporative moisture. A good way to tell is that the towel should not feel wet, but rather just cool to the touch. Take one pass with the cloth, just gently gliding it over the surface of the shoe. This will remove the bigger, looser particles that would scratch the leather if you were to press too firmly. Then, using a clean section of the towel, make a second, more thorough pass to clean anything that remains. As far as pressure goes, think of cleaning a delicate glass vase. Gentle, broad pressure, but still firm enough to get anything that's stuck on. Next, give the heel block and sole edge a wipe. And don't forget the welt. You can use a brush, though I just use a folded edge of the towel to get into that crevice. I also give the sole and heel a wipe since I often wear my shoes indoors. And why not? Let your shoes dry for 10 minutes before moving on to the next step. Now that we've removed all these surface debris, we need to clear the leather's pores of any oils, micro dirt, or old wax layers clogging it so that our next products can properly penetrate. I like to use... This reviving cream by Swedish shoe care company Paul Brungard. I like this stuff because it is easy and risk-free to use. More intense cleansers like Reno Matte are excellent products, but are a bit overkill and can strip the color if you are not careful. Applying this is where a little bit of technique comes in. You'll need a strip of soft cotton cloth at least 18 inches long. I'm using cut-up strips of a cheap t-shirt I got at Walmart, though it would be even cheaper just to get a swath at a local fabric store. Place one end over your index and middle finger, then wrap the tail end around and tuck it in through its own loop. Pull it down and tight around the back of your fingers and also pull tight the initial front flap. Adjust any edges as needed to get a smooth, taut surface covering your fingertips. This process is a little awkward, though trust me, it is a skill worth learning. You simply cannot achieve the pressure and precision needed for optimal cleaning with a loose cloth. Apply dabs to your cloth and rub it into the shoe using circular motions. And when I say small, I mean small. While these products are all pretty risk-free to use, too much of anything will cause problems. For reference, one container of any of these products should last the average person with two to three pairs of shoes several years. Use less than you think you need, you can always add more. I like to start with the toe and, in patchwork fashion, move down the shoe until I get to the heel. You can be pretty firm here. This stuff also doubles as a mild conditioner, so it's okay to really work it into the leather. Try to be even in your distribution and rub in each section until the cream fully disappears. Part of why we do small sections is to avoid this. Leather is very sponge-like in that it is constantly absorbing what is on its surface. Letting any kind of product sit on the surface like this for even just a few seconds can lead to discoloration over time. You will notice the cloth lift the grime from the shoe. If it is particularly dirty, you may want to switch to a clean section halfway through, though generally I only switch when I move on to the next shoe in the pair. Don't try to keep doing this until the cloth comes out clean like you would cleaning a countertop. 
being that aggressive may start stripping the base color and oversaturate the leather. Let rest for five minutes to absorb, then brush thoroughly with horsehair. This will remove any excess product on the shoe and evenly distribute that which remains, especially in those crevices that are hard to reach otherwise. We use horsehair because it's a relatively inexpensive natural material that is stiff enough to distribute and remove product from the shoe, but soft enough to not scratch the leather. I'll talk more about my exact technique in the next step. Your shoes will be saturated from this process, so I suggest waiting at least an hour to dry before moving on. For wait times over 10 to 15 minutes, I like to just put them down for the day and come back to them tomorrow. That way, instead of this process occupying my mind for several hours of a single day, it's just 10 to 20 minutes per day for two to three days. While the reviving cream is a mild conditioner, this is where we deeply condition your shoes. Conditioning leather is the process of hydrating and lubricating its natural fiber structure with an oil-based substance that allows it to maintain its flexibility and a rich, saturated color. The best conditioner on the market, in my opinion, is Renovator. This stuff is the white gold of shoe care. From the French company Saphir, Renovator is a mink oil-based conditioner used by some of the best shoemakers and cobblers in the world. It also has some soft waxes in it which produce a nice gentle shine when brushed. For an animal-free alternative, they also offer a macadamia nut-based version that functions similarly. This process mirrors that of the reviving cream, though this time we will forego a cloth for our bare fingers. While a cloth is better for more even distribution of product, the direct contact and acute pressure that you get using your bare fingers will allow the conditioner to more deeply penetrate the leather. We still want to do our best to evenly distribute, but for an uncolored primary conditioner like this, our priority is getting that oil fully absorbed through, so feel free to use firm pressure here. Let dry for 10 minutes and give it another brush. Stick with long brush strokes here to maximize even distribution. While in some areas like the vamp toe and heel, I will brush in multiple directions to ensure no spot goes unbrushed, I always end with strokes that go front to back. Now that we are using products with soft waxes, it is important that all brush strokes are long and unidirectional to ensure an even shine. This can be tricky on areas like the vamp, so I try to come at them with a bit of an angle or rotate the brush as I'm sweeping it. Avoid short, stunted brush strokes that just poke and bend the bristles against the leather. This aesthetic shine will telegraph to others, your clients, colleagues, and business partners, that you take special care and attention to detail in yourself and therefore will do so in all your interactions with them. The Renovator conditions the leather and revives the existing color, but how do we actually restore the color as it naturally fades? Especially on the sole edge where it will inevitably wear off simply from the act of walking itself. Cream polish. Cream polish is similar to conditioner in that it is an oil-based product, though this will have a slightly greater wax content and most notably, dyes. As such, this product is best used to restore that fresh, better than brand new color to your shoes. While polish won't aggressively stain like actual leather dye, even distribution is nonetheless critical to avoid discoloration and patchiness over time. Thus, I like to, again, use a thin cloth to apply. We are going to do the same thing as we did for the conditioner. Use a similar quantity, though feel free to be lighter or heavier according to how much color you would like to impart. There is only so much the leather can absorb on one pass, so when I want even stronger results, I'll opt for multiple thin layers as opposed to one heavy layer. This also reduces the risk of uneven distribution. What's new here is that you can use this stuff to restore color to the ever important but off neglected sole edges and heel block. Side note, even if you use a cloth, this process will stain your fingers. It's not permanent, it will wear off in a day or two, though you can expedite this if needed by rubbing it off with some isopropyl alcohol. Water will not work. If you need to avoid staining altogether, I suggest using basic nitrile gloves. Let dry for 10 minutes and give the shoes a brush to set that fresh color and soft glowing shine. Now you could stop here. The leather is structurally maintained, the color is fully restored, and the cream polish has enough waxes to provide moderate protection and a dashing shine. This restoration will last several weeks, maybe even a couple months, but how can we instead make it last up to six months before needing to do it again? Whack.
masks. We'll create a protective film over the entire shoe, mitigating the penetration of any environmental oils, salts, or water deep into the pores of the leather. It will also help seal in the conditioner, increasing its longevity. This won't prevent your shoes from getting dirty or needing to be cleaned again, but it will dramatically reduce permanent stains and discoloration. And the waterproofing on the sole edge is a bonus for those rainy or snowy days. Because I just saturated the leather with both conditioner and polish, I like to again let it dry for at least an hour preferably overnight. Just like before, apply a layer of wax all over the upper of the shoe. If you want a bit more protection and shine, you can wait five minutes and apply another layer, though don't apply more than two or the wax film may become too thick and cause unsightly visible cracks. Because wax only sits on the surface and we will be brushing it thoroughly, even distribution is not critical. You can use a cloth or finger, though I like using my fingers just to have that haptic feedback and control. Wax is colored, though because we are applying so little, discoloration is not much a concern. Once the upper is done, apply one or two layers to the sole edge and heel block. Let sit for 10 minutes and give one last thorough brush. This will produce a higher glowing shine that will not draw attention, but will truly impress when noticed. Despite being simple, this routine is so thorough that you may not need to repeat it again for another six months. In the meantime, to keep your shoes in this pristine condition day in and day out, anytime you want, even daily, all you have to do is give them a quick brush to remove any dust and rebuff that surface wax. And if needed, you can always refresh with another light coat of wax once every month or two. Between this and the occasional color touch-up, I personally save almost $1,000 a year by not going to a cobbler. And let's break that down real quick. Before I started doing my own shoe care, I had to get my shoes clean once a month. A trip to the local cobbler was 10 minutes and 7.3 miles one way. That's 20 minutes and 14.6 miles per trip plus another 10 spent at the shop. I had to make two trips per month, one for drop off and one for pickup. So that's 60 minutes and 29.2 miles per month to clean my shoes. We'll come back to the time. Let's talk gas. 29.2 miles per month is 350.4 miles per year. My car averages 26 miles per gallon. That comes out to 13.48 gallons of fuel annually. Gas prices have fluctuated wildly in the past few years, but let's just call it an even 350 a gallon. That times 13.48 gallons comes out to $47.18 per year. Not a lot of money, but we're not even close to done. Each cleaning costs $20 plus a 20% tip, and I had two pairs I wore regularly. That comes out to $48 per month or $576 per year. Back to time, because time is not cheap. I personally currently charge $195 an hour to consult on a one-to-one -one basis, but let's use something a little more applicable, the average salary here in Denver. $80,000 divided by 2,080 hours gives us an hourly rate of $38.46. Each month costs me an hour of time, so multiply that by 12, and that comes out to $461.52 total time cost per year. When you add together all the gas, cleaning, and time, I was spending $1,084.70 a year to keep my shoes in good condition the first half of the month and only acceptable condition in the second half of the month as I wore them out. That's how much money I could be saving if I didn't go to the cobbler. Okay, pause, pause, pause. That's all the money I was spending at the cobbler, but what about all the money and time I was spending doing everything I just outlined in this video? All the shoe care products I listed here add up to about $150. The creams and waxes may very well last you up to five years, but let's just say three. The horsehair brush will last forever, but let's just throw it in to keep the math simple. That's $50 a year. This process takes me an hour of cumulative work time for two pairs, and I only need to do them once every six months. There is the time required to regularly give the shoes a brush, but let's just call that equivalent to the vehicle depreciation and inconvenience of leaving the house that we didn't account for in the initial cost. Factor that all in, and not only am I saving $957.78 a year by doing my own shoe care, but also keeping my shoes absolutely pristine day after day. And I enjoy the process, it's very meditative. Now this is my personal, middle of the road process that works for me. If you want to know that bare minimum or absolute maximum that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, or even want to customize a process of your own, 
take a look at my complete guide to every level of shoe care that covers all products from the absolutely mandatory to the exuberantly luxurious. I appreciate you all very much. Thank you and take care.